This is the Mid E LX90 8 inch um, advanced promo free ACF with a auto star uh, auto guide, which is a talky version. And now is doing the I've leveled it using my mobile phone and also True North. It found the True North for me. I've attached the Velcro on the back of this and the side so I can attach this if I want. <clears throat> I'm not going to use that thing for here, there's a clamp. And I'm not going to enter, there's no point it. So, he's searching now for the Star Vega. Of course I've not attached anything yet, no um, as you can see, no back focal tube, no diagonal, no nothing else. Okay, I'm just letting it do its job. As you can see, this daylight, of course, you cannot see much. So, I just say that I agree with it, that is a, a Star Vega. And I'll let it go now for the Star Capella. And he's looking now for the capella. Of course, if it was in the night time, I would have actually tried to see if it is really in center. I would train it and other thing. It's correcting itself. Okay, it's in. I can now press enter if you see it. Of course, I cannot see the capella at this time of the day. The sun has just set, so it's not visible. But I just say enter. I agree with it. So now align successful. Object. Okay. I want to see the object. So let me see what object it has. Press the enter object and now it goes to solar system. And I say again enter and this goes to all the objects in the solar system that are within the in the library of this. So Mercury no Oh sorry, I have to go here actually. It's a weird system. Mercury Venus, you have to press this and this. Venus, Mars I'm testing it just to see Jupiter. Jupiter must be around somewhere in the horizon, above the horizon. So I enter. It must be in that direction. Somewhere. If it goes into that direction, that means it's working. So I enter. It's calculating. It's giving me some information about it. Basic stuff. Distinguished by its giant red spot, thought to be comprised of a raging storm of hydrogen and ammonia. So he says it's uh, minus five degrees behind the horizon or is uh, under the celestial equator. Um, let's see anyway. Impressed by its colossal size, ancient Roman astronomers named the colorful behemoth after their primary god, Jupiter, or Jove. Later philosophers attributed okay. It's not reason, so it doesn't tell him to me. Oh, I've not entered the correct time, by the way. It says 3.10 a.m. And the time now is around, uh, um, yeah, around 9 o'clock. Let me just enter the correct time. That's another session. This is inside of the Mead um, LX90. You can see the baffle inside the uh, secondary uh, pathway. Uh, I recommend when you get a telescope, a meat telescope with go to system, uh, reset the auto star. You go to the mood and go down using these scroll buttons here. And you go down or up and find the reset. You have to reset it. Then, when you want to operate every time, everything. 
you have to go first. Set your date, then set the time, day, day uh, saving, summer saving time, summer time, one hour ahead or behind, which is winter normal time. And uh, that's it. And then you go for the alignment again and auto align or two star. I'm using two. Uh, stars and I uh, adjusted the telescope toward the magnetic north using my mobile phone. Hopefully that's correct. And now I'm entering and let it go to find where it wants. Akerner, okay, I don't want the stars I can see here is one of them is that star which is the you see at the center. That's the uh, Arcturus. So I go down. Find the Arcturus. Antares. Antares must be also visible beside the Jupiter. But I'm going for Antares. Arcturus. Uh -huh. Arcturus is here. And let us see if it is correct. Now I can find it. Okay, we're turning toward the right direction. I want to turn on the flash so you can see. Okay, that's the direction is almost right. So when it goes there and it points to the Ar Arcturus, that is rising. Uh huh. I think that is almost right. I think it's around two, three degrees wrong. I have to press it and bring it to that position. I will do it. Okay, the Arcturus is now at the field of view. Um, of course, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, it's in the field of view at the center. And uh, I use the focal reducer just to make the wild field of view. So I'm now entering, so it knows that's a star. So I'm now going for the second star. Let me see what a star I can choose. So for telescope, I've attached the auto guide to a star with the velcro to the body I can it's like magnet as if it attracts to it and for the second star I'm going to choose the star which is right above our head let me turn off the flash yeah that's the star you see there in the center that's Vega and I'm going to use that uh, I've not chosen the star Vega uh, the easiest way is not to go alphabetically A, B, C, D in the name of the first uh, letters of the stars. Go upward. Scroll upward and reach from the end to the beginning. So I'm now going to enter this. And just go to the star to slew toward the target. As you may be able to see. trying to find it uh, of course I will try to help it because it's the first time I'm using this with this system so I have to bring it to the center I will do that for the second star I noticed that the Vega was covered with the clouds so I just chose the answers over there beside the brightest dot that you see is Jupiter so what I'm going now is to press enter and this is calculating. Alignment so successful. I'm now going to choose the object. So I press enter again. Solar system. And this is going to Mercury. And I want to go for Jupiter. So I'm going down. Venus. Mars. Jupiter. Okay. If I enter now, this will go to talk about it. I don't want talk because I've listened already to that. I want it to go to Jupiter. So... Yeah, dead center. Dead center. We have the Jupiter dead center. If I land successful.
so far. It's amazing. I have it at the center now. Oh, lovely. Okay, what is important is that you're not just centering them, it's tracking them. That's very important. So, I may later try to do some astrophotography. I'm just doing learning this uh, system, how it is, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm now watching the M22, a global cluster in the Sagittarius, which is somewhere there. I asked the uh, telescope to find me the Ring Nebula, Messier 57, and it found, for the first time I'm seeing the Ring Nebula, it's, uh, the averted vision is clearly there, and uh, oh, I'm so excited, I love this telescope, that's such a good piece of kit, oh, exciting. I'm now seeing the M13. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember, have I seen M13 before in the binocular? Probably at 1240 I had. I never saw it with a telescope. That's clear, it's there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very fuzzy thing, it looks like a comet, but it doesn't... I have, I have to really dark it up my eye, but there is a little light here, as you can see. And uh, Anyway, it's beautiful, it's there. Is somewhere there, as you can see, the Arcturus, somewhere it was. Anyway, interesting, M13 in the, yeah, the constellation Hercules. Okay, I'm using the Mead uh, LX90, and uh, of course I'm going to a tour, is now going into M5, Messier 5 is a global cluster in the Ophiuchus constellation. What I was noticing is that when I was using this is that when I need to, you know, when you want to look through the eyepiece, you need to hold your hand somewhere and just be sure that you, you can keep your head at a good distance from the eyepiece. So these handles come useful, very good for that. I always wondered because they are not good for carrying or lifting the telescope. For that, I don't think they have done a good design. It's not clear where you have to hold it to lift it. These ones are not really for lifting. But anyway, you can use it, but it's not designed for that. I think the design is just for holding it when you're observing. And it's very sturdy, actually. When you hold it, no vibration in the eyepiece. That's amazing. I love this setup. I think the secret of my success with observation of many of the faint fuzzies, nebulas and deep sky objects was that um, I put this uh, Celestron, or you can use Mead. Mead one is a little bit, I noticed, it's too more, shows the prior, secondary mirror too much. But the Celestron one is alright, and if you use Antares, that will be also alright. This focal reducer actually made the field of view wider, so um, um, when I'm looking at the faint fuzzies, which are, uh, you know, big, uh, I mean, it can be up to two, three degrees in the case of the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, if you look at with a narrow field of view, you will not see the contrast between the darkness of the sky and the f brightness of the faint fuzzies. So this actually increased the field of view, and I could see, discern them against the background of the sky and I think that was the secret for that this was really good get a, a focal reducer to use with uh, of course uh, you can remove this if you want to for planetary viewing you probably it's better to remove it or use a Barlow or a low magnification lens just to uh, see the more details that is visible in the case of the planetary objects like Jupiter and Saturn which are now in the sky and uh, 
for other things, for for very wide objects like the faint fuzzies, nebula clusters, and all the things. It's better to have the focal reducer. So we have a, almost two degrees. Yeah, this is a this is ten millimeter. I had a forty millimeter last night, and this forty millimeter. And with this uh, focal reducer, the widest possible field of view was around two two degrees, which is really good. Full four. Uh, uh, moon widths you could see and that's the secret I think to using this comfortably with a um, good amount of the visibility And one of the moons of the Jupiter is now very close to it. It's probably Io. I tried to capture it in a photo.